This is Abia COVID-19 update. Abia COVID-19 update. Welcome to another edition of the program. It is Abia State COVID-19 update. My name is Michael Oni. On this program, we highlight daily reports of the Interministerial Committee on the Control of COVID-19 in Abia State, uh, just as we also uh, highlight the effort of the state governor, Dr. Okeze Ipazu, in ensuring that the state is safe from this virus. This program is running simultaneously every weekday, Mondays through Fridays, on several radio stations in the state on Flow 94.9 FM, BCA 88.1 FM, Vision Africa Radio 104.1 FM, Family Love 99.9 FM, all in Uma here. We're also live on Buzz 89.7 FM and Real 99.1 FM in Aba, the commercial capital of the state. Just before I go straight into uh, the uh, uh, data and of course the analysis of the data and the figures globally and also in Nigeria, let's quickly go straight into the discussion today. I'm going to let you into the data uh, and of course a global update on coronavirus later on this morning on the program. Uh, we will be talking about finances as far as COVID-19 era is concerned. The post-COVID, we're still in COVID anyways. Uh, there was a time uh, we had a reduction in the number numbers how is the government coping despite the dwindling revenue coming from the federal government the IGR there was a lockdown and of course IGR dropped some challenges concerning finance and of course COVID-19 uh, in Abia State I do have the Honorable Commissioner for Finance joining me this morning on Abia State COVID-19 update Dr. Aham Uko good morning to you doctor yeah thank you for inviting me good Morning. to have you join us it's a challenging time i must say throughout the year 2020 and now we started again 2021 with a spike in covid 19 infection and also uh, we're having issues uh, with revenue it affected the oil which is uh, where we're getting uh, the largest percentage of our money from in nigeria how was 2020 how did the government survive 2020 i'm talking about abia state government well, Abia State Government is a subnational. Okay. Subnational to Nigeria as a nation. You really pointed out that um, there was, um, in fact, oil price volatility, you know, which um, dwindled revenue from the oil. And um, when that happens, the money that gets to state is also reduced. Um, the COVID 19 also affected. Uh, businesses and individuals you know most shops uh, were not operating fully uh, most companies were operating less than capacity um, parks at some point were shut down KK people at some point were not carrying full capacity and so on and so forth so generally resources available to the state uh, reduced and um, when that happens um, individuals and businesses are affected it reduces their disposable income mm -hmm. and when disposable income is reduced to a large extent um, it affects uh, people's uh, propensity to pay tax so we had higher level of um, tax evasion um, yeah, last financial year yet. okay and so we needed to do some level of um, inducement or relief you know to people both individuals and companies to encourage them to now pay tax as well or to continue the level of tax payment um, uh, that were, they were used to. So, last year was quite challenging, but I thank God that um, the governor was able to um, draw up a program that enabled us to um, tie through those waves. Interesting. Uh, it affected the uh, state government even... Uh, there was a time you presented the governor uh, presented supplementary budget exactly. the house of assembly uh, had to come up with a supplementary budget mm -hmm. how were you able to finance the supplementary budget and uh, uh, the implementation level too exactly um that supplementary budget was as a result of um in fact a world bank um, federal government requirement mm -hmm. um re require you know, stating that all states should um, reduce their 
recorded expenditure by 40 percent and the capital expenditure by 45 percent and then we had that um, COVID-19 responsive uh, 2020 budget um, passed uh, before the middle of last year uh, okay now um, the performance was about 70 percent uh, performance um, the largest extent was funded by of course the monies we got from for the allocation uh, internal generated revenue and some grants uh, that we got from uh, the world bank those okay. grants are performance based grants oh interesting um, uh, the, uh, the latest one announced by the federal government uh, is it part is it well, the same thing yeah it's part of it okay in fact it started there was one in april another one in september then the last one uh, took place um, in in december those are performance based grants um, they are tied to what is called disbursement link indicators okay disbursement link indicators you know emphasizes what you are required to do to improve on your fiscal disposition transparency and accountability in your public financing mm. and then you're given a grant is not is not a loan because that, you've that done grant, well exactly with your finances exactly and we did so well among the instances we are ranking tops interesting that that's a good one now l- let me bring you uh, up to speed on what is happening on the street now if you ask um an average abian an average abian would tell you well covid 19 is not real the state government is using it to get money from the federal government so as to make more money the numbers are uh, skyrocketing every day did you get support from the federal government of course the federal government gave um gave states one billion naira um, in respect to uh, management of covid 19 and even before that money came we have done a whole lot. We have three molecular labs functional in Abia State. And we have um, uh, isolation centers. Uh, and you know that we test uh, people free. And the medication for COVID-19 related illnesses remain free in Abia State. And so we, when, when it has to do with uh, COVID-19, we have done very well. And we are managing the resources very well. You know that the relief that we got with respect to COVID-19, we are very well distributed in Abia State. We mm. used the churches, we used the local government authorities, we used the town unions, and so on. So we're not one of those uh, states that had uh, palliatives stuck away. No, 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 no. There was nothing like that. So we, we, we. I, I, I thank the governor for him being able to instill in us that transparency and honesty of purpose to always ensure that all we're asked to do we do it to the letter Mm. interesting apart from the federal government uh, intervention during the covid era the one billion era given to abia state were there other interventions maybe by private uh, spirited individuals exactly there were um i could remember vividly google university Good University was quite responsive. Nigerian Brewers, Golden Guinea, some individuals too. So we have a list of them, mm. very well documented. You know what um, individuals provided. You know um, with response to uh, supporting us for that COVID nineteen um, activity. And I, I tell you, we are still within the confines of COVID nineteen. Let us not have the illusion that it has come and gone. Uh, okay, there is a second wave actually. And um, in some climes, they are beginning to shut down. Um, activities are also beginning to ebb. Uh, so, so I'm worried. Uh, my worry is that I don't know how we'll be able to really um, tie through if there is a complete shutdown. Uh, because shutdown affects businesses and activities. And when that happens, it impacts heavily on the finances of government so you do not advise shutdown just as the federal government is saying well we're not seeing any shutdown uh, soon we may not lock down everywhere like we did during the first wave well uh, uh, it, it should it, it should be reactionary okay uh, depending on how things go <laughs> if things get very critical we have to leave first uh, before we operate even as a government. Oh, looking at so, the finances of the government as it stands uh, now, 
Uh, will the lockdown affect the process of the government well? Or it will... Uh, well, affect I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say because of process of government, if we must shut down, we shouldn't shut down. Oh, okay. If, if, <laughs> if medically the recommendation is that we must shut down to stay alive, let us shut down. Um, when when the when the uh, when the when the era passes, we 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 pick up our pieces and begin to move on. After all, um, last year civil servants were asked not to come to work for about five months, and the government of Vukas has paid them complete. Schools were shut down, and teachers didn't come to work for about seven months. The government of Doctor Kizib has paid them complete, and so. Um, and and the government was operating, you know, almost normally. You know, so so what I'm trying to say in effect is that um, yes, we have to listen to medical advice. Mm. So if the medical advice um, says that look, certain aspects of the activities of government should be shut down, then it, it I, I, in my own personal view, okay, uh, we need to we need to align ourselves with um, whatever is the recommendation of those who are authority in that area uh, but um, be it as it may um, when we get to the bridge we cross it all right uh, uh, honorable commissioner I-, I want us to go in depth now let's be very specific uh, there were issues during the covid era in 2020 and which uh, we we had a bit of it uh, spilled uh, to 2021 and uh, the government said it's not business as usual. Uh, those were the explanation we got from the government. I'm talking about issues with some parastatas. They came out and said, well, you've not paid us completely. Uh, some uh, secondary school teachers and also they're saying we have issues. And the government is saying, well, well, we've got issues with money coming from the federal government and the IGR. We had COVID-19. What is the true situation? of things as far as the payment of parastatus in particular and also uh, secondary and primary school teachers in Abia state well in the past uh, two three weeks we've been talking about salaries payments mm-hmm. and so on I-, I think that the government of dr kizipazo has done exceedingly well um, when you look at payment of salaries allowances and so on of um, teachers and all civil servants uh, but yeah, people are just isolating teachers. All okay. civil servants in the state today, across the three MDAs, are being paid. They are paid in full. There is no area whatsoever as it relates to that. And I said earlier that during the period of a uh, lockdown that stretched almost six months, seven months, the teachers were paid in full. All the arrears had to do do with 2018-2019, which the governor has mandated us to liquidate, and we have commenced the liquidation. That's so, the gradual so, so, payment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so okay. we commenced the liquidation. So in December, we we paid three months um, to Secondary Education Management Board. Mind you, the the primary school section. Um, we, we have almost only about three months or so outstanding. Now, for the health sector, yes, you have, you know, um, APSUT, you have Health Management Board. Mm-hmm. Uh, hospital uh, Management help, Board. Yeah, hospital, sorry, sorry Hospital yeah. Management Board. Hospital Management Board, we pay them three months in December. Um, I best when in teaching hospital, we pay them two months in December. But the most important thing is that these institutions must continue to look inwards to improve on the internally generated revenue. I said it the last time when I was in a program in under station uh, some days back that Health Management Board has about 11 uh, general hospitals, uh, two cottage hospitals, uh, two dental centers, one eye clinic, another one neuro, neuro psycho, psych, psychiatric hospital. Okay. But in the entire year, every month, let me just take it monthly, they make less than 5 million naira in internal generated revenue. They have make less? Less than is 5 million. Is that encouraging? It is not encouraging. These are hospitals. I'm talking about 11 general hospitals. People buy card. They have a pharmacy. They undertake surgery. They have radiography. They have, you know, uh, x-ray. They have all manner of things. They have science lab and so on and so forth. They have dental centers. 
we supply even you know um some some we support them by way of infrastructure ambulances we pay salaries and so on and so forth so why should the aggregate from that area amount about five million naira i mean that is very poor that's on a monthly basis on a monthly basis so when you also look at it from the other side of the coin you know where um going to everything is done by word of cash you know all payments usually by word of cash they are more or less resisting automation and those cash they, they, are, they are hardly accounted for and then you blame government i mean they should also support the activities of government you know by helping heaven help those that help themselves so what i'm saying is that all the institutions that will give subvention and all that should look inwards to strengthen the administrative procedure to reduce malfeasance, reduce pilferage, reduce all forms of inefficiency. That is what we're saying. Interesting. Well, we've been talking about post COVID 19 economy in Abia State, and of course, uh, uh, will I say post because we're still in the COVID era and uh, we have a dwindling economy not only in Abia State but in the uh in in the country uh, we've we've got issues with the crude oil prices at the international level and of course uh, idr been affected also at the state level we'll continue our conversation right after this break it is abia state covid 19 update this is abia covid 19 update abia covid 19 update All right, thank you very much for staying tuned. It is still Abia State COVID-19 update. And of course, I uh, need to let you know that the coronavirus mutation first, ra- first found in Britain, uh, the mutated virus has now spread to 50 territories and countries uh, across the world. According to World Health Organization, with a similar South African identified strain, which has now been found in 20 countries. The United Nations body also noted that a third coronavirus variant of concern, according to WHO, uh, found in Japan may impact upon immune response and needs to further investigation. And of course, China recorded its first COVID-19 death in eight months today as experts huddled to discuss worrying new strains of the virus that uh, is spreading rapidly across the world now. And of course, inbo- inbound rather, air passengers will henceforth show their negative COVID-19 certificates at a point of entry to gain access uh, to the United States. That according to the United States uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention uh, and control and the prevention the cdc uh, well in nigeria yesterday nine people died from coronavirus very unfortunate uh, taking the death toll to 1382 in nigeria in total unfortunate uh, according to the daily update from the nigerian uh, center for disease control with the recent surge in coronavirus cases uh, feeding through into fatality now nigeria has been having a consistent spike in deaths from this disease well in the past 26 days if you've been following uh, the figures right here on this platform there have been 170 fatalities as a result of covid 19 complications in the country uh, the second wave of the virus has also continued to sweep across nigeria 1000 1,398 new infections recorded in 23 states yesterday. Unfortunate, 23 states of the Federation. And the Association of Resident Doctors of the University of uh, Ilorin Teaching Hospital yesterday said about 20 of its members have been, have been in the last three weeks uh, infected with COVID-19, according to the president of the association. Now, let's uh, get back to our conversation. We still have very much in the studio. Honorable Commissioner for Finance in Abia State, Dr. Aham Uko, uh, very much with me in the studio. And we've been talking about uh, finances, economy in Abia State, as far as COVID is concerned. Let's talk about uh, our frontline health workers, uh, Honorable Commissioner. Uh, they are like soldiers at the forefront of the war as it stands now and i believe there should be some sort of uh, thank you uh, payment for them exactly we have incentives which um is not my duty to tell you exactly what uh, to uh, do okay. for them the commissioner for health you know has all the details uh, but we rest assured that um all our frontline workers um are, are quite happy um and then um we the the isolation center we have 
is uh, very well kitted mm -hmm. yeah with both um, the needed infrastructure and the required medication and as, as, as i said earlier we have three molecular labs where people are tested free and once you know there is any trace of uh, covid um, the government will also proceed with the nursing medication uh, free interesting so i'm going to take two just two calls uh, this morning on the program and uh, you have to be very brief uh, so that uh, he can respond to those questions the lines are open now zero eight zero eight one eight two six nine four nine or zero eight one one six zero five two nine four nine i take the lines again zero eight zero eight one eight two six nine four nine or zero eight one one six zero five two nine four nine uh be very brief 45 seconds uh max uh, you drop your question hello good morning good morning michael you're welcome good morning my honorable commissioner in the studio good morning sir yeah morning my brother happy new year to all of you in the studio yeah, same to you i remain mr prince will as well with one hand on at your door all right mr honorable Prince. Commissioner, honorable commissioner, quickly thank to you your so question much. please thank you I, I believe you are one of the best commissioners we have in the party. <laughs> Thank you. Now, as, as, as you have disclosed that federal government has been giving money on palliative, at least I had one billion naira to stay. In some of the southern eastern, eastern states, I can never hear that. Then, I, as a political analyst, I am, let me tell the whole world that Abia State is, is one of the states in Nigeria, mostly in the southeast, that had the highest paid workers. Your pay wage, I've done it from Abuja. It's highest in the southeast. Exactly. And you are paying. Exactly. May God bless you. Thank you very much. And on the governor himself, please. If there's a there's a there's a palace in my area that says if a lizard fell from 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 Ayuko tree, it looks left, right, and but nobody praises him. I will swag with Prince Holy, praise the governor. Exactly. The governor of Abuja said the governor of Abuja said he's doing well. Exactly. One one of the one of the parameters I'm facing the governor is this. on the on the on the money given to the, to federal states in Nigeria as at yesterday or two days ago, Abia is one of the states that received it, that received it on the transparency initiative exactly. that the federal government gave you. Am I talking? Am I talking? Uh, exactly. Right. Pr Prince, will you have to wrap yes. up so that we can allow yes, orders on the state, line? In my, Sorry. In some of the states, including my state, we could not receive that. All right, Prince. That means that Abia state government and the state is doing well. Th thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, please, uh, there's something honorable commission. Your name, please. You start with your name, please. Eh? Your name. Uh, I'm Pastor, I'm Pastor Sunday. All right, Pastor. All right, thank you. He said that the diagnosis is uh, free and the treatment is free. But I have uh, an uncle who told me last year he spent a hell of money with his wife. Which of you the know, which of the facilities? Huh? Which of the facilities? Here, you know, here in Adia State, I know why. Which, yeah. which of the facilities? Exactly. Which of the facilities? Exactly. Is it at Amachara? Exactly. Or FMC? So what I'm saying is, this is supposed to be free. It's supposed to be free. I'm asking. I'm asking which of the facilities? Because as far as I am concerned, I'm I'm a little bit yeah. into what is happening concerning COVID nineteen in Abia State. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm yeah. concerned, if you go to any of the is isolation centers managed mm -hmm. by the government, you will be yeah. tested free, mm -hmm. and also you will be taken care free mm -hmm. if you test positive to for COVID nineteen. So I'm asking which of the facilities. I don't know. He didn't tell me the facility. All right. So if you find out, it's very important. Uh, that, uh, mm. that we are isolated and uh, find out. Find out yeah. before you make your, you know. Um, All right. Th okay. Thank you very much. We do appreciate Pastor Sunday. Hello. Good morning to you. Can you move away from your radio cell? Let's take uh, just one more call and uh, we we'll wrap up the discussion this morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Michael. Yes. You're welcome. Uh, good morning, Honorable Commissioner. Yeah, good morning, my brother. My name is Mr. Majo Edward. Okay, editor in chief of the Iron Pillar. This man, I come from the Republic of Nigeria. All right, Mr. Majo. Yes, 30 I seconds, please. Question. Good. Uh, there are some people that want to have a uh, uh, COVID 19 test for traveling. 
And I tell them, say, why can't you go to Amatra? Then we are saying, is it as international standard? I want to ask, <laughs> if anybody who runs COVID-19 test to travel, does it not permit or allow to be used as international airport? Uh, uh, all right. Th th thank you very much for your question. According to the federal government standard and the PTF, if you're traveling out of the country, a PCR uh, result is needed for you, and that will be obtained not at the government uh, centers now. Uh, you have to pay, I think, about fifty-two there about a thousand to get that uh, 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 to get that done. All right. That's how far we can go. Honorable Commissioner, I do want to appreciate you. And uh, it's very important to let us know uh, some of the financial statement of the government. Is it online? Are, are they online? If we can, if we need them, exactly. All, all right. Exactly. Um, I, I thank you for inviting me um, to say that the government um, is quite responsive to the impact of uh, COVID-19. We have uh, tax incentives, uh, both individual and corporate to ensure that uh, the, those taxes are being paid and to improve on the responsiveness of people towards payment of taxes. Okay. And then, and then, and then um, as a caller stated clearly, we're doing quite well when it has to do with uh, fiscal transparency, accountability, expenditure efficiency, uh, revenue mobilization and their sustainability. All so right. the governor has done very well. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner. Dr. Aham Uko. Thank uh, you very Honorable much. Commissioner for Finance. My name is Michael. Only we will be back tomorrow. This is Abia COVID 19 update. Abia COVID 19 update.